talking to Terry, it's been uh, very obvious, his passion for the quality of what they want to see. And they would not do it on the web unless they can create an immersive experience like that. So it's really possible to do this in the browser using HTML5. And we really hope uh, you and everyone watching this will showcase applications like what we just saw. So what does it mean to build on the Chrome Web Store? It means that you can reach over 70 million users. These are primary users of Chrome as of today. And in June of last year, when we talked about Chrome OS, we said we had 30 million users. As of today, we are over 70 million users, and the number is growing fast. So these people will be able to have the Web Store right on their new tab page and discover add both free and paid applications. So it's also important to remember that this Web Store will also be there in Chrome OS as well. So the Chrome Web Store will work on Chrome on Windows, Mac, Linux, and Chrome OS. It will support both free and paid applications. It will work in over 40 languages and over 70 countries. We will be bringing this in the Chrome Dev Channel soon, and we'll have a whole, whole session at I.O. to talk more about this. One thing I want to add is we support standard web technologies, and so applications written for Chrome Web Store will also continue to work on every other modern browser out there. So it's been really exciting to talk about HTML5. We've always believed that the future of web is HTML5. And over the course of the last few months, it's been very exciting to see every major browser vendor share that opinion as well. So with that, I'm going to invite Lars Rasmussen, who spoke to you last year about Google Wave, uh, an amazing example of what's possible in the browser, to give a future update on HTML5. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So the web has grown up, and Google Wave is starting to grow up as well. It's been a full year since we showed you what was really our vision for how real-time communication and collaboration could work on the web. We showed you right here on this stage here with an 80-minute demo last year. And today, Google Wave is a product that people are starting to use to get real work done all over the world. And we're going to show you that today with a 90-minute demo. I'm just kidding. We're not going to do that. What we are going to do is this. We're going to open up Wave to everyone today. So you no longer need an invitation to use Wave. Just go to wave.google.com and log right in. Thank you. Thank you. So we're making, we're making Wave part of Google Apps, where particularly ambitious, you might even say crazy services, start their life. Uh, Maps, my last project, started there five years ago. Wave has been in an invitation-only preview for half a year. We've gotten tons of great feedback. Thanks so much for that. And more than anything, we've learned that Wave really shines as a place to get work done. In particular, if you have a group or a team of people that use Wave to collaborate on all manners of projects. And I think we hear a lot, and this actually matches our own experience, is that Wave changed the, changes the way you work, sometimes in subtle in unexpected ways. And we hear this in many different contexts. Of course, lots of programmers use Wave to coordinate their work. But we hear things like a fifth grade teacher has her students do all the research in Wave, and the kids love the live typing. It feels like you're talking to the other participants on the Wave, and the teacher loves it because she can see in real time what they're doing and jump right in and provide guidance. Um, brick and mortar businesses, like this hotel here, they use Wave exclusively to uh, track and discuss all of their tasks during a day. They tell us how Wave stops issues from falling through the cracks and helps keep everyone on the same page every day. Um, Deloitte is a good example. They have a new project team that's spread over four or five countries, and they use Wave to coordinate all of the work and tell us how Wave actually saves them money in travel and VC cost. And so since Wave is about getting work done, it's important for us to get Wave uh, make Wave available at work and at schools. And so also today, we're making Wave part of Google Apps. If you have an apps domain, you or your administrator can easily enable Wave for all of your users at no extra cost. Thank you. And let me, let me just say this. If you tried Wave already, in particular early on during the preview, and you found it wasn't quite ready to get work done, now's a good time to come back and give it a second try. Wave is a lot faster, and it's a lot more stable than when we started the preview. And we put a lot of work into these basic usability things, like you can now get 
email notifications when your wave change. We've made it easier to navigate the unread pieces, excuse me, of a wave. Um, we have added tutorials and templates to help new users get started. You can now remove a participant if you add them by mistake. All of those things, if you have a group or a team, you're working on a project together, try out Wave. I think you'll find it makes you more productive. Now, this is a developer event. And I think already some of the coolest things about Wave are things you guys have built. We really, really appreciate that. And continuing to improve our APIs are hugely important to us. And so just a few months ago, we launched an entire new version of our robot API that lets robots create waves and push content into waves on their own schedule. We recently made it a lot easier to embed a wave on your own website. We even made it possible for non-wave users to see a public wave that you embedded on your website. And today, we're checking off a, a bunch of top requested features of our API for starters. We are rolling out a change that means that robots no longer have to live on Google App Engine. They can now live anywhere on the web, which makes it a lot easier to integrate Wave with your own application. We're also launching a new uh, Wave data API designed to let you build things like notifiers, but also lightweight clients, in particular for mobile devices. We're adding media and attachment features to both our robot and gadget APIs so that you can integrate with places like Picasa or Flickr and so on, and you can build inline viewers for media types in Wave. We're also adding a bunch more hooks for your extensions to integrate into our client. And if you want to see some of the cool things people have already built, join us out on the floor in the developer sandbox. Uh, for example, salesforce.com is with us today showing how they're embedding Waves into their new product, Chatter. Now, also, we've always wanted Wave to be an open technology so that anyone should be able to build their own Wave service and have it interoperate in real time with Google Wave. And so we were super excited late last year when Novell announced that their new product, Pulse, is going to support the Wave Federation protocol. And today, SAP is announcing that their new product, Streamwork, will also support the Wave Federation protocol. Both companies are with us today out on the floor and at a session later where we'll show demos of how our different Wave services are starting to be able to talk to each other in real time. And to make this, thing, this sort of thing easier for others to build their own Wave systems, we are today open sourcing additional components of our production code, um, in particular the in-browser editor, which is one of the hardest pieces to write. We're also um, publishing, and thank you. We're also uh, publishing, and this is another top requested feature, we're publishing the beginnings of a client server protocol so that you guys will be able to build any Wave client you want and put it on top of any Wave service that speaks this new protocol, which of course will include Google Wave. Now, just to end off, I want to remind you that we're using Wave at this conference here. There's a couple of Waves allocated for each session. You can use them to ask questions of the presenter, someone will take live notes and you can discuss the session in there. I really hope to see you later, either out on the floor at one of the many sessions that we have today and tomorrow, or of course, on WAVE. Happy waving, everyone. Thank you. And so just like WAVE is getting to work, our next speaker will talk about the web going to work. Please welcome Google Director of Engineering, David Glaser. All right, all right. So Sundar showed you how open standards are leading to innovation in the consumer web with the help of people like Terry and Kevin and Hakon showed you how open standards have always allowed more choice, which has always led to more innovation. Lars showed you how that's true with Google Wave, and he showed you how Google Wave is now heading off to work. Well, I'm going to spend the next 45 minutes showing you more about how is the web making work better. What are the things that we can do to help the web transform what we all do at work, what our customers do at work, what our partners do at work? How can the web help there? The good news is the web is already transforming the way we work. 